in this weekend, you'll need something to watch, especially on Sunday. <laughs> Whether you plan on a movie or you want to go watch a show, our good friend Dale is here. We love Dale. He's a friend of the program and he always tells you the straight skinny and, and what's going on. There he is, film critic Dale Pollock. Good morning, Dale. Thank you so much for being with us again this Friday morning. Good morning, Christina. Good morning to my old buddy, Brian. <laughs> I like the old buddy part. I'm going to use that to stick at you later. I'm we're old so and we're know. buddies. That's how it works. <laughs> All right, well, Dale, this is pretty exciting. I love HBO Max because they have so many options mm -hmm. on that streaming platform. And there's one called The Last of Us. I haven't checked this out yet. What's this one all about? Well, this is, there's been a lot of hype on this series because it's based on a famous and very successful video game that was introduced in 2013 that takes characters and plot much more seriously than shoot them up and killing people. So the video game really established an identity of its own. They've been working on this adaptation for five years. Mm. And it's nine episodes, and they are each an hour and a half long. So it's really nine movies that you're watching with this series. And I've got to tell you, it was very compelling. Mm. Pedro Pascal, who has been playing a, a number of different roles in various series, is the father who loses his daughter in a very dystopian world there's a horrible virus that's ravaged the earth and has basically turned people into zombies but this is not a zombie movie it's a post-apocalyptic journey across america and the production value and the acting are just first rate i think this is one of the best adaptations of a video game that i've ever seen Wow. I mean, Dale, first of all, when you said it was an hour and a half long for each episode, I thought you were going to say it was too long, but I see you gave it three popcorns anyway. I did because it's really compelling and makes you want to keep watching. And that's what a streaming series should do. And you're right about HBO Max. They have a lot of interesting programming. They're merging, merging with Discovery. So you're going to see a lot of changes in HBO, including a recent price increase. Uh, yeah, that one's not Breaking be news fun. from Dale Pollack. Oh my goodness, Dale. Dale, I actually own that video game. I have never played it. I've never started it. Yeah, it came with a console that we got and wow. we haven't played it yet. So now I'm it's intrigued to, be, to play it. I'm not a video game person. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be really strong. Okay, very good. So we go from The Last of Us to The Sun, Dale. Talk about that. Well, it's interesting. Last year, I mean, it was two years ago, Anthony Hopkins won an Oscar for a film called The Father where he played a man really losing control of his mind. And now here, two years later, is The Sun. <laughs> and although Anthony Hopkins has a small role in this film, it's not about his son from the previous movie. And this is Hugh Jackman as a very concerned divorced parent about what's happening to his son. Laura Dern is the mother. And the kid is troubled, he's depressed. And the movie basically is their attempts to rescue him. And there is an interesting twist at the end, so I'm not going to do any spoilers. Um, but it is worth watching all the way to the end. It just feels kind of familiar. Hugh Jackman is very good in this. He has a bad hair dye job. But other than that, I think he's pretty uh, uh, compelling in this. And the series, uh, the, the film is interesting. It just doesn't go where you would hope it would go, which is a real exploration of the teenager. And it's very much completely from the parents' perspective. So okay. I was actually thought it might have been a more interesting film if it had been from the kids' perspective, but that's not what they chose to do. It's an intelligent, literate film, very emotional. You know, it's a tearjerker at the end. But it's not something that I feel you have to rush out and Ooh. see. Okay, that's HBO Max as well. No, that, yes, that's HBO Max, HBO Max as, well. as well. I've seen them, um, they're promoting it very, very heavily in the last couple of weeks, too. And I got to say, the missus has a, has a thing for Hugh Jackman. So, yeah, oh, Hugh yeah. Jackman he, with adamantium he, claws or can burst into song at any given time. She loves them all, but uh, so I'm sure we'll be watching this at some point. What was your popcorn rating, Dale? Uh, three popcorns for three this. Three popcorns, okay. All right, well, Whitney Houston has made her debut in theaters. Well, at least the story of Whitney Houston has with I Want to Dance with Somebody. Dale, I've definitely been interested in seeing this mm -hmm. one. What can you tell us about the film? Well, I originally thought it was a documentary. So when it started and I realized it was a fictional version of her life, that interested me a little bit more. And the center of this film is Naomi Ackie, 
uh, an actress I was unfamiliar with. She plays Whitney Houston from her teenage years to her death at the age of 49, and she is stunning. Mm. It's one of the best performances I've seen on TV all year. Wow. And so if you're going to um, want to go to a theater to see this, it'll be streaming soon. It's got so many of her great songs. They're all really done. And what's interesting about this film, it's Whitney Houston's voice. Wow. It's not the actor singing like in George and Tammy. This is Whitney you're listening to. And she is an excellent lip syncer. So you completely believe that this actress is singing these songs, but what you're hearing is the real Whitney Houston, and it makes a huge difference. Okay. Because nobody in the 20th century had a voice quite like Whitney no. Houston. Totally agree. She's one of, one of the great singers of the last era. Yeah. And this uh, film, which is two and a half hours long, uh, too long, does her credit in many different ways. It skirts her whole violent relationship with Bobby Brown, and it's very sanitized in terms of her drug use. You don't really see that in this film. So they're keeping her a little sanctified and not really letting it be completely realistic. But there are some final credits at the end that make clear what happened and how she passed away, drowning in her bathtub because of a drug-related uh, seizure. So it, it's a it's a sad story on one level, but a really astonishing performance by Naomi Aki, and she just really makes the whole film come alive. So I think this is worth seeing in a theater with great sound and a big picture, because it's one of the best performances I've seen all year, and I'm surprised she is not being talked about for an Academy Award, oh, and yeah. I think she should for Best Actress. Oh, wow. D um, Dale, what is your popcorn score quickly for this one? Four popcorns Four. because it really interested me and kept me going for two and a half hours. That's a long stretch, and the music is what makes it work. Okay. All right. Like you said, there's nobody quite like Whitney Houston nope. to hear her voice on the big screen. Going to definitely be something that we're going to check out this weekend. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you, Good. Dale, so much for your time, as always. And, of course, if you enjoyed Dale's su suggestions, you can check out his website, DaleMPollock.com. But, of course, if you missed any of this week's reviews, don't worry. They're right here on your screen. You can take a picture. It's The Last of Us on HBO, The Sun, which is also on HBO, and I Want to Dance Somebody, which is currently in theaters, but Dale says it will be streaming soon as well.